Okay, so Pi News episode 45. First up, I really like this project. This is a HP mini PC from back in the day. And uh, if I show you what it was originally like, uh, this is from eBay and you can see uh, this is 99 pound at the moment. If I click on it, just to show you it a bit bigger, uh, it's got a proper QWERTY keyboard and obviously number pads and everything uh, with an old school LCD display, 512K of RAM. Uh, you can see it's got the old VGA socket there and a cool little sort of clamshell design. And so what Chris Lott has done uh, is managed to put a Pi Zero inside this. Now, this was uh, going to make one of my previous Pi news, but I forgot to include it for some reason. We've now got the Pi Zero 2W, so you imagine the Pi Zero is pretty slow for an operating system. Uh, obviously going to be a lot better than the old HP, but it'd be really nice to see this with a Pi Zero 2W in it, uh, because really that becomes a usable computer. You've got to see its tiny mouse here as well. Uh, and so if we look at some of the specs, 4.3 inch uh, screen, 800 by 480 with backlight, obviously uh, a lot better than the original. It's a touch screen as well, uh, although as, as you can see, it says not connected yet, stereo speakers and microphone. And if we have a look inside, there's just no room in there at all. It is, it is so crammed in. You can see all the ports and everything. Uh, really, really great work with this, really interesting. I don't know what happens with cooling uh, because it doesn't look like there's a lot of room in there, especially with all this tape when that goes together. I saw a really interesting one of these in a charity shop recently. It was more like this, had a like a proper keyboard on it. Next up from Raspberry Pi and DIY Projects, uh, name that tune song title guessing party game. You can see from the pictures, I mean the pictures pretty much explain it all really. So this is the operating system. If we click on, you can see there's, that looks like a Raspberry Pi 3. I think that looks like a full size HDMI. And uh, there's a JBL speaker on the top there. And uh, if we look at the next picture, there's various different paddles with long cables and everything. Uh, I don't know what the two, uh, what the green ones are for, but uh, yeah, it just looks like a really interesting sort of party game. Next up, I really like these stories. Spotted a wild pie powering the holiday light show on Google's campus. You can see here in this box with weirdly a transparent display. Uh, now I think probably looking at it, that's a Pi 3, or it's an older Pi anyway, because it's got a full size HDMI on the side of it. If that was a Pi 4, you'd probably want to cover that up because they're very hard to get hold of and people do anything for them at the moment. The price is getting sky high on Amazon. And next up, another portable handheld. After many failed attempts, I finally made a working handheld gaming system without following a guide. It's a bit of a mess inside, and I always like to look inside these. Uh, so, oh, it's a video, this one. That peels off the display. Only a couple of buttons on the front for controls, so older games. But got a fan in there as well. And look at that wiring, great. Better at soldering than me. Next up was an unusual build on Reddit. I used the Raspberry Pi 4 and OpenCV to build an auto-aiming sugar cube launcher to target coffee cups. <laughs> and basically, uh, you put sugar cubes in here and it fires it out into a coffee cup. But if you watch the video, uh, it shows that it's best not to put the coffee in first. There'll be links for this and all the other stories in the description. Tom's Hardware had uh, a story on Raspberry Pi Zero 2W external antenna. I haven't had an issue with my Zero 2W, but then my Wi-Fi is in the same room as I make my video, so uh, it hasn't been an issue. Get the wireless support you want on the latest Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. And you can see here, nice close-up pictures. Ryan Dory has taken matters into his own hands by upgrading the latest board to use an external antenna for wireless connections. And all the details, and there's a video there as well, if you're interested in doing this yourself to get better Wi-Fi. Certainly if you're going to use the Pi Zero 2W for a project where it's maybe a camera which is further away from the house, this could come in very handy. Next up is a deep dive into Raspberry Pi Zero 2W's power consumption. And uh, it's a very interesting read. There's loads of information on here. One of the interesting bits was this tool, which was used to test the power, is uh, cost around $500, but it's now around about $700. So it's not a cheap thing. Um, but uh, if you have a look through the article, there's loads of information there. Uh, if you like detail, it is in there. But I won't show it. I'll put a link in the description. So a new version of Recall Box came out, um, and I'm going to show that in a separate video, but uh, this is really interesting. This is uh, a SCAR adapter for a Pi, I think it's 3, 4, or 400. So you can see here, it's got GPIO pins on it, it's got a VGA connection, and it's got a SCAR socket. So there's a big obsession with CRT monitors for retro gaming to see it as it used to be. 
The Recall Box RGB Dual Project aims to allow everyone to play their favourite games on CRT TVs without any configuration. Many of you still have a CRT TV in the attic, I do, and if you don't, CRTs can be found very easily at a very affordable price, or even for free. Our goal is to get as close as possible to the original image and game experience on your consoles and arcade games. Let's keep it short and simple, the result exceeds all our expectations. So you can see here they show a raw pixels image and an RGB Dual. Uh, so it's kind of smoothing the image, making it look much more authentic to the original image. And uh, it looks pretty cool when placed on top of a Raspberry Pi 4, as you can see here. And this shows it, because this actually, when they do this image, it shows the actual curve. So it shows the curve of the CRT monitor. But uh, my CRT TV, as I showed in my old video, I think it was in one of my Amiga videos, uh, it has a line whistle, which I can't hear because I'm too old. Um, but my kids hear it and it is really, really high pitched and, and they say very loud. So yeah, I love to see things like this come back. Maybe great for your arcade builds uh, to have that really authentic feel. It looks like some other YouTubers have had these to test uh, and so you can see the results in those videos. Oh, and they also have a limited edition one here, like the white one. Uh, but it's yeah, it's nice to see the 21 pin SCART. Crikey, I used to sell a lot of those back in the day. And there's a case that has the cutout for the SCART as well. Now this is an old article. This came out a year ago, um, but it came up on my Google feed saying, oh, this might be something you're interested in. And this is a really, really good, very interesting, um, real a, another deep dive really into the GPIO pins and what all the pins do and various different things about it, all color coded uh, and, it, and it just goes through and, it, and loads of things I didn't know. And uh, really, really interesting, it explains all the different bits that kind of crop up if you do the maker stuff. But I thought it was interesting, there are DNC pins. Last are two pins in blue that are currently labelled as DNC, which stands for Do Not Connect. This may change in the future if the Raspberry Pi Foundation alters the boards or software. Next up, Low Quality Tech asked if I could try out the PS2 emulator on Raspberry Pi 4. I have installed it onto Android, which is on this stick. So let's shut this down and boot up in Android. So this is Consta Kang's version of Android 12, and you can see I have managed to get it installed. It wasn't that easy though. Uh, on the Play Store, uh, if I show you on my iPad, here you can see the app is showing up as installed on a device. Uh, but if I click on it, uh, the Raspberry Pis don't show up. So you can see my Samsung device shows up, um, but nothing else. It even says it's not compatible with my NVIDIA Shield, and I might try it on that uh, by sideloading it. Anyway, so in the end, I went to APK Pure and downloaded it. Uh, I had to download two or three different versions, uh, and I'm not sure which one actually ended up installing. So if I go into Downloads, I would imagine it's still in here. Yeah, so well, there's two, there's three there, because I think that is it as well. One of these managed to install, but it doesn't work. Uh, I'll show you what happens. Uh, so if I click on it, I've managed to import a BIOS, uh, and I've also put three games in there as well. But uh, whichever game I try to launch, and I think I've tried all of them, and it just quits out. So, I, I mean, I wasn't expecting it to work, but uh, I definitely got further than I thought I would get. Um, but as it showed up on the list of being able to install on my Samsung device, I thought I'd show it on there. It's a Samsung Galaxy S8. Uh, so let's shut this down. So uh, was it F5? Okay, so I plugged in my Samsung Galaxy S8, and I've noticed in the comments that uh, some people get really annoyed when I use too many dongles in my builds. So uh, this is no change because I get more comments and more comments helps the YouTube algorithm. So USB-C to the hub. The hub is powered by a Raspberry Pi USB-C adapter, HDMI in the middle. Then I've got a USB-A to C, a USB-C to micro, and that's going into a four port USB hub so I can have my mouse and keyboard in. And I could also have my Xbox controller, which is gonna be very handy for this. Now I could do all this with Bluetooth and get rid of all the dongles, but uh, you know. Okay, so that setup didn't work, not because I had too many things plugged in, because I had not enough things plugged in. Turns out the Samsung DeX doesn't like you using screen capture on it. So I've now plugged in an HDCP stripper. So the HDMI comes out of here, goes through the stripper, goes out of here, and then into my capture device then out of there into a splitter and then into the monitor. Right, let's switch over to screen capture. Okay, so let's navigate to all the apps. And Ether SX2. You can see it detected the BIOS and everything. 
So if I wanted to play, say, Spider-Man 3, so it hasn't recognized my joystick yet. So I've managed to pair my Xbox One S controller. The 360 controller didn't work, which usually works with everything. Uh, and also my Xbox Series S controller didn't work as well. Um, but that is pretty much, uh, you know, Xbox Series S controllers are definitely less compatible at this stage still uh, with lots of devices. But uh, you can see the performance is slow. Uh, I've tried it on uh, OpenGL and also software render. Vulkan doesn't boot on this device, but uh, you may get better performance on that if you've got a better Android device or a newer Android device. ETA Prime did a video where uh, he's run it on a $99 smartphone and had some pretty decent results. I've got a list of easier to run PlayStation 2 emulation, so I might go through that and uh, try some of those games and see if I can get better results on this device. But even the fact that I'm running this on this older smartphone is really quite impressive. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.